What's up, guys? This is the Gospel According to Mark with a C. He is I, and I am he. Just taking some time to tell you exactly what's on my mind. Thank you for joining me once again, my friends. Let's jump right into this, guys. You might recall on the last exciting episode of the Gospel According to Mark with a C, I was talking in part about the usage of the N-word, okay? And, um how I found it to be unacceptable on any level. This is something that most of us have accepted by now. And um, I got an interesting comment in that last video, in the comment section. And guys, you know that I've always said that what I like most about doing this, uh, you know, like making videos and stuff like that, is that I get educated on a lot of things, okay? And um, somebody came in and asked me a question that forced me to do a little bit of research that I found the answers uh, to this question to be very interesting. And this comes from AGC. And big shout out to AGC. AGC wanted to know, and he says, or she says, I'd be really interested in your take on the problem with the dog's name for the Dam Busters film remake, okay? Now, if anybody out there is a history buff or a film buff, you might already know what this is referring to, but I did not, okay? So they're asking about the Dam Busters film remake. It's a historical fact. It wasn't seen as anything but slang in Britain at the time, but it's become an insurmountable problem with the story. So, being that I don't know anything about this film, The Dam Busters, um, or the name, you know, I figured, let me go and check this out, all right? So what did I do? I went and did what we all do. I went to Wikipedia. And what do I find? And I quote, Nigger was a black male Labrador retriever belonging to Wing Commander Guy Gibson of the Royal Air Force and the mascot of number 617 Squadron. Gibson owned the dog when he was previously a member of the 106 squadron. Nigger often accompanied Gibson on training flights, and there was a great and it was a great favorite of the members of both 106 and 617 squadrons. He was noted for his liking of beer, which he drank from his own bowl in the officer's mess. Okay, so <clears throat> what we have here, it turns out, is there was a movie called The Dam Busters, and I believe it was from 1955. And like you said, it told the story of uh, the 617 Squadron during World War II. And apparently the uh, commanding officer had a dog named Nigger. They named the dog Nigger. We named the dog Indiana. But anyway, there is a planned remake of this movie. And it is being done or produced by none other than Peter Jackson of Lord of the Rings fame. Now, it's, it's funny here because this is going to come down to an issue of historical accuracy. And one of the things that Peter Jackson has been uh, lauded for is his um, accuracy, or at least trying to stay as faithful to the works of Tolkien as he possibly could. This was not without criticism. I know a lot of people did have a problem with Peter Jackson's films. I understand there were minor problems, but still, you know, he has a reputation for just being true to the spirit, at least, of the source material, okay? So, he would probably be a stickler for trying to be as historically accurate as possible. So it goes on to say, Peter Jackson, producer of the planned remake of the film, said in 2006 that it is not our intention to offend people, but really, you're in a no-win, damned-if-you-do, damned-if-you-don't scenario. If you change it, everyone's going to whinge and whine about political correctness. And if you don't change it, obviously you're offending a lot of people inadvertently. Is it really inadvertently, though, if you do know the history of this word in both contexts, you would know what you're doing? We haven't made any decisions about what we'll do. That was as of 2006. Now, Stephen Fry, writer for the remake, was asked to provide several alternative names for the dog and come up with several suggestions. Executive producer David Frost rejected them all, saying, eh, well, Guy sometimes used to call his dog Nigzy. So I think that's what we will call it. Steven has been coming up with other names, but this is the one I want. Jackson's assistant contradicted this a week later, however, saying, I stay true to the story, 
You just can't change the name. We have not made any, de any decisions yet. The script is being written and that decision will be made closer to the time. Later, Fry said the dog would be named Digger. Okay, well in 2012, writer James Holland commented that the controversy over the dog's name seems to have overshadowed other aspects of the raid. When he told people he was planning to write a book on the raid, 9 out of 10 replied, What are you going to call the dog? He found that the three characters connected with the raid that most people had heard of were Guy Gibson, Barnes Wallace, and Nigger. Okay, wow. All right, so this is what is going on, all right, when you're talking about a possible remake of this movie, The Damn Busters, um, the dog's name is, is, is Nigger, okay? So, um, like I said, this is a, do you stay historically accurate and release this in the United States as a major, major motion picture release, especially in the climate that we have going on now? Now, I think it's also worth noting that in reality, the actual dog, his tombstone, because he got a hero's burial and everything, they love that dog. And, and I understand, right? Because when you really think about it, black dogs have a history of being named uh, things like Midnight, Blackie, Shadow, Charcoal. I have a Labrador Retriever, a black Labrador Retriever. And I asked my son, I told him, this is your dog, you can name him. And he came up with Smokey. That's the reason why the dog's name is Smokey. Some people thought that he was named after uh, the character in Friday. Um, I don't know. You know, I, I mean, my son probably at the time hadn't seen Friday. So I, I assumed that he named the dog Smokey based in part on his color, right? So we've always named these dogs these things. And we love Smokey. He's probably outside the door now like, or, or I hear my name, or, you know, but um, yeah, of course, we love our, our dogs. They're our friends. You know, they're more than our friends. They are family. They love us when nobody else does. They're so selfless in that way. So, of course, we love them. But uh, these assholes actually went further and named the dog nigger. Okay. And I say assholes because look, it was always a slur. It's not like, like, I know you said that it's, um, it was slang, but I don't see any, um, historical evidence that this was just a slang word. It, I think it was always a slur. So I just think they just named the dog nigger because, you know, they were some, you know, assholes would have messed up fucked up racist sense of humor. I mean, that's how I'm seeing it, right? They might've been heroes. They might've done what they did, but they named the dog nigger. All right. So anyway, uh, apparently the headstone was changed for nigger. And, uh, it says here, and this is an article that was in, uh, the guardian two years ago, because I went digging on this. <laughs> Dan Buster's dog's racial slur gravestone is altered by RAF. The dog's name was on a headstone at base of uh, the 617 Squadron, which carried out a wartime raid. It says here, the headstone of a grave of the Dan Buster's dog, whose name was a racial slur, has been altered. The 617 Squadron, based on at RAF Scrampton uh, in Lincolnshire, took a low-level night attack on, Germans dam on German dams in 1943, probably the most famous raid in the history of the force. Wing Commander Guy Gibson used his dog's name as a code word to say the dam had been breached. The Black Labrador Retriever died on the same night as the raid. Films about the dam busters have either edited out the dog's name or given him the moniker Trigger instead. A source at the RAF said the gravestone at, Scr Scrampton, at Scampton would be stored in a safe location while the Air Historical Branch considers the next steps. It is understood by the RAS review of its historical assets uh, is continuing and further changes may be made. The conservative former minister, Sir Edward Lay, whose constituency includes Scampton, wrote to the RAF station commander saying, Undoubtedly, we are both more sensitive and more sensible today when it comes to the delicateness of racialist and derogatory terminology which have been used with unfortunate informality in the past, which speaks to what I said before, they knew when they were naming the dog nigger that it was a racial slur. They, they absolutely understood that. They just didn't give a fuck. Okay, so that's what we're talking about. Let's get that straight, number one. They always knew that it was a racial slur, based upon what I'm seeing here, at least. 
It is perfectly understandable that this is a tricky matter, to which there are no simple or easy solutions. I am, however, very fearful of our ability today to erase or rewrite history. He's right about that. The past needs to be explained, taught about, and learned from, not rewritten. Wing Commander Gibson's dog was much loved by the damn busters and was killed while he was on a raid risking his life to defend our country. That was a brave nigga. A spokesman for the RAF said, as part of an ongoing review of his historical assets, the RAF have replaced the gravestone of Guy Gibson's dog at RAF Scampton. The new gravestone tells the story of Guy Gibson's dog, but its name has been removed. Wow. Okay, well, they removed the name, but they are preserving it. Now, see, this is what I talked about before, about tearing down statues in the South, you know, of Confederate heroes and stuff like that. I don't believe in destroying history. You definitely can't rewrite history. That would be insane. You know, that's like telling yourself in your mind that something traumatic didn't happen. You're just in denial. You know what I mean? And I understand it. It was traumatic. But at the same time, it did happen. You know what I mean? So, <clears throat> this, uh, it, it is interesting. It's an interesting thing. I don't believe there's any way in hell that you're going to make a movie for American theaters and you're going to have a beloved character as it may be named nigger i don't believe it it's gonna happen you know what i mean like even if i could uh find some humor in this and sit there and laugh at the shit um because after all i am not a nigger okay and i've always told my son this you know be careful how much you internalize these things but the fact of the matter is is that historically speaking that was used against people all right it is a racial slur no matter what and i am interested also in pointing out here that for everybody and this in you know i guess specifically is talking about those black people who have pushed the idea that nigga is a term of endearment well this kind of uh challenges you because they love that dog okay so when they call when the dog got killed and they were like nigger oh my god nigger i miss you stay with me nigger stay with me nigger breathe nigger breathe they were really, really loving this dog. It was a t it, it became a term of endearment. They loved nigger. They were nigger lovers. <laughs> this story gets more and more ludicrous as I think about it. They were nigger lovers. <laughs> this is a story that you will only find here. Okay, guys. I wouldn't. I wouldn't suggest that anybody else touch this hot button topic. But uh, yeah. Um, so anyway. I was asked what I think about it, and um, this is what I think about it. Um, I I understand and I am sensitive to the fact that this thing has to be, you want it to be historically accurate, you know what I mean? But at the same time, there's no denying they named the dog a racial slur, you know what I mean? Now, considering the fact that this was World War II, if they had named the dog a racial slur, an ethnic slur, a slur, against the Jews, this would be a non-issue. You know what I mean? So, yeah, you just can't do it, guys. I mean, you can, but you're going to risk the fallout from it. You know, like I said, even if personally I can handle that in the knowledge that this is actually historically accurate, um, a lot of people wouldn't be able to. And they certainly wouldn't be able to uh, accept these people as heroes. You know, if you have your heroes running through the movie talking about, come on, nigger, I don't think, uh, you know, it's going to be a challenge, you know, for general audiences, especially today, to accept that, you know, even though at the end of the day, they were nigger lovers. So anyway, guys, that's my feelings on it, okay? And a big shout out, thanks again, you know, for asking me the question. Guys, feel free to get in the comment section and do that. Ask me questions. Ask the gospel. And I will do my best to answer that, especially if you send a super thanks with your questions and requests. All right, guys. Thanks again for uh, bearing with me. Um, <laughs> this is a funny thing. But as always, guys, you can like, you can share, you can subscribe, and um, I'll catch you on the next one. This is the Gospel According to Mark with a C. Rock on.